Okay, so it turns out I was wrong about Next.js, especially Next.js 13. Now, as some of you might remember, I did a video a week or two ago stating why I used SvelteKit instead of Next.js for my freelance client project. And the reason was, is because SvelteKit is much faster, because essentially it ships less JavaScript to the client that then needs to be executed for the code to actually show, compared to something like React or Next.js, which also implements server-side rendering to, you know, kind of alleviate that problem, but it does still ship way more JavaScript. And it seems like Next.js 13 solved that problem. So the way I found out Next.js 13 is actually really fast is because of the open source software that I built. And I built it out completely, not paying much attention to performance at all. And then just for fun, I decided to make a test on the production website and see how fast it actually is. Now to do these tests, there are a gazillion tools you could use like GT metrics, um, and so on, but I generally just use uh, pagespeed.web.dev. Essentially, it's a Google Lighthouse, but it's independent from your system because they handle the Lighthouse analysis because I personally feel like the system you use to make that Lighthouse analysis actually influences the speed. So my PC is pretty good and it also always has really high Lighthouse scores, but then when I compare it to my tablet, it's way lower. And that is why these lab environments, as they call them, are pretty good for determining the actual page speed of your website. And it turns out Next.js 13 is pretty good at that. This is the score, it turned out, with a 100 performance, which I found really surprising, especially because the performance right here is on mobile. And then we have a first contentful paint of less than a second, speed index of less than a second, and all values are really good, no cumulative layout shift at all, which I found really surprising. But obviously, these numbers could easily compare to SvelteKit while also having a much better developer experience. Because specifically in SvelteKit, what I've noticed is that because you can't use the components, but instead have the actual HTML that you can't include JSX in, you have to use NPM packages differently, often resulting in you not getting the type safety that comes with the packages that are provided to React and Next.js. So just for me personally, in that one project I've done in SvelteKit, specifically with a package called Swiper.js, the developer experience really tanked. And with a performance score of 100, or you can do this test yourself, mostly it's about 99. This is not cherry picked, but 100 is not normal. It is on the upper spectrum. It's like 98, 99 most of the time. With those performance scores, I cannot possibly justify using another framework that has a, at least for me, worse developer experience and also an environment that has way less packages available to it, right? There are so many good UI libraries and components for React or Next.js that you don't don't have for Svelte. So that maybe little performance benefit you do get from SvelteKit that doesn't really appear in these numbers anyways is not worth, at least for me, sacrificing that developer experience that is so good in React environments. Now to really drive the point home, I actually did the freelance client project that I did in Svelte initially because of the performance benefits, at least just the homepage, I did the exact same thing in Next.js 13. Was that a lot of work? Yes, but I think it was worth it because now we can actually compare the same functionalities in two different frameworks really easily. And because it's the exact same thing, I think it's a very fair comparison to make. So here are the numbers, I've got them open on my phone here, and with SvelteKit, we got a performance of 99, which is really good. By the way, these are not cherry picked at all. That's literally for both of them, the first test I have done and taken into this video. So with SvelteKit, we can see a first contentful paint of 1.2 seconds, same for the speed index, then time to interactive. This is where SvelteKit does actually shine compared to Next.js 13, but they're both really good as you're gonna see here in a second. SvelteKit, 1.8 seconds, remember that and then a blocking time of 90 milliseconds, and then all the other metrics on 100. Not that it really matters because I didn't pay attention to that in Next.js 13 yet. And then for Next.js 13, we got the same performance score. So the server client architecture that they implemented with the server and client components really pays off. The performance is much better, at least for me, in Next.js 13, even if it's not deployed on Vercel. That's very interesting because one comment under that video I made about why I don't use Next.js anymore stated that with Vercel, it was, it was very fast, but then you kind of have a vendor lock-in, right? You need to deploy to Vercel 
uh, in order for your project being fast. But the open source software I talked about at the beginning of the video, interestingly enough, that is not deployed to Vercel. I deployed that to AWS, uh, Amplify, and then it's delivered via CloudFront CDN. And then the domain is hosted on Route 53, all in the AWS environment. And still it was insanely fast. So I don't think that really flies here. I think there is no vendor lock-in with Next.js 13 being really fast. Now the only difference in uh, the metrics is the time to interactive. As you can see with Next.js 13, that did took a bit longer. So remember SvelteKit, what I mentioned earlier, it was 1.8 seconds. And then now we're talking about Next.js 13, it's 3.1 seconds. And I think that's where you kind of notice that more JavaScript is being shipped to the browser. But the performance metric, the most important thing I think in the Lighthouse score did not tank and that is amazing. So that's my experience at least performance wise with Next.js 13. I'm really impressed and I'm gonna keep using this framework. I think um, what they did to upgrade from 12 are really, really good changes, especially the app directory with client and server components. I think it's a great thing and there's a lot of potential for Next.js in the future and a lot of potential for you if you don't know Next.js yet to learn it. All right, that's all I want to share this video. Let me know your thoughts down below if you tried out Next.js 13 and have any experience performance-wise. Thank you very much for watching. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye-bye.